your big Hollywood sunglasses and light the torch because it's cellar time. Welcome to the Crack Cellar. As the prophecy once shit its pants while trying to finish Black Adam in a movie theater. I'm Two Spirit Penguin Daniel. And I can hold my shit together, Broadcaster Nichols. <laughs> and uh, today, Broadcaster, it's a special day. I believe it is the first time we have returned to the theater since Rise of Skywalker. Can you believe that shit? Is it? It is for me and you together. I know that for sure. Because like, Rise of the Skywalker is the last time I went to the movie theaters, period, until tonight. Oh, no, yeah, I take I that you're back. Right. I actually went one time to see Moonfall with my wife while my kid was at school. Other than that, it's the last time. By the way, Moonfall was a cool movie. Don't believe the lies of the liberal media. Hashtag Moonfall. <laughs> Uh, so we saw Black Adam in a uh, glorious IMAX with the seats that were basically dead middle of the theater. So what did you think about the experience overall? I'll tell you what I thought about the seats quality. They sucked ass. Yeah, those seats did suck ass. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a solid point. Uh, and also, as I alluded to in the intro, I think about halfway through the movie, maybe like two thirds through the movie, uh, someone near me, I thought, farted. It was, you know, it smelled like shit. And I was like, fuck. And I kept waiting it for it to go away, and it never did. So I'm pretty sure somebody near us shat their pants. Or they just smell like utter shit and took a minute for it to come to get you. <laughs> that could be it, too. It's possible the wind, like maybe the air conditioning inside, like they flipped a switch and changed directions or something. <laughs> and uh, a foul odor blew our direction. Did you smell any of that? Because you were sitting right next to me. No, nah, I didn't really smell a B.O. I did smell like a... It smelled like uh, shit. Like, like it a, smelled... A brush... Like- like, you know when, like, someone smokes some really nasty weed and they've just been sitting in the room and they just smell like a saturated, <laughs> shitty weed smell? I That's what that I too. smelled for a minute. Yeah, I smelled <laughs> yeah. that too, actually, now that you mention it. But, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, so Black Adam, IMAX, what do you think? I think it is probably the best to eat it. DCEU movie to come out. <laughs> Sorry, kids. That's a hard one for me. <laughs> I think it's one of the best ones they've launched. I think Joker and Black Adam are it. Yeah. I think it's a it's kind of a shame that Rock says this is like the start of phase one that kind of makes me think they're discounting Joker too or or something like that. Cause last time I heard Joker two got greenlit and then someone said it's a musical with Lady Gaga and I haven't heard anything after that. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm not quite sure what's going on with Joker two, but it doesn't seem good, yeah. <laughs> but black Adam, awesome. not a musical black Adam, <laughs> not, not a musical <laughs> dude. It was so refreshing to be honest. Cause it was, they weren't pulling any punches. You know, they were they were killing people left and right. There wasn't any excessive gore or anything like that, but you could tell they were not afraid to, like, you know, well, essentially to stick with the theme of the movie, you know, mm-hmm. to show somebody that's not a hero have powers, you know, yeah. which was pretty cool. Yeah, it's um, like it's weird because I watch a lot of horror movies. So, like, there's a term in horror movies called kills, which just means people dying and typically when you talk about kills in a horror movie you're kind of describing the method like there's all you know thousand different ways to die or whatever and there's this kill and that kill and i actually look at black adam like in that same vein because yeah he <laughs> yeah. he spoiler alert he kills a lot of people in this movie he doesn't I'd say just beat them 90 percent 90 percent of people he comes into contact with <laughs> and, and it's basically like every time he kills someone he does like a mini fatality 
And yeah. it's yeah. like, it's like P, it's almost like a PG 13 version of Mortal Kombat fatalities. Like there isn't a lot of blood and guts, but it's graphic at the same time. Yeah, I, I would have to agree. There definitely was a uh, finishing touch to all the kills. Mm-hmm. You know, like everyone, each one was a little unique. And each one also like ramped up the animosity between him and Hawkman, <laughs> which I which I really liked. You know, from mm-hmm. the moment Hawkman comes into the scene, you know, he's like pretty much both. Well, not, not both. What am I saying? He's proclaiming essentially that black adam or teth adam or is it teth or t- tetch um, Te- well, i'll just say teth adam but uh he's like pretty much saying he's a bad person even that like there's no connection at this point between the two and they really don't have any history together he just has this knowledge or <laughs> this unquestionable knowledge that he's a bad man. So he's just coming to put him down. <laughs> and he mm. thinks he has like the, the, like the guy. I mean, <laughs> you can tell it's kind of a comedic bit in the movie, but at the same time, like the character itself, like the, the idea comes off is that he has like some divine authority to like put black Adam in his place or yes. something like that. Yeah. And it just yeah. fails miserably every time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's one thing I'll, I'll say this movie so uh, I'll say surprisingly, because as much as I was trying to hold back my um, eagerness for this movie, as it was getting closer and closer, I just kept feeling better and better about it. Even though, like, all I heard were negative reviews left and right from the media, like they were just trying to bury this fucking movie to the point where I feel like they were literally trying to stop people from going to the theater so it would bomb. That's uh, so weird because Dwayne is kind of like on the good side of Hollywood. I mm-hmm. thought. Not really. No, he's he kind of he kind of teeters the edge. He's an edge walker. Um, he's an edge walker. <laughs> but what I, what I was gonna say is that uh, the acting in this movie is surprisingly good from almost all sources. Pierce Brosnan is in this. Pierce Brosnan steals the show many times. He has this amazing yeah. like back and forth with Black Adam, as does Hawkman, as you mentioned. The other two sort of kid characters, there, there's two other superheroes that make up the Justice Society, and they're kind of like teenager type characters, which I usually hate those. But I even thought these two were pretty well acted, both of them. I liked them, and I liked the powers. Like They weren't just like... I mean, Adam Smashers, you know, kind of cliche, whatever. But the girl actually had a really cool, unique superpower that you don't see all the time. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like been there, done that, seen this a thousand times, like you'll kind of do with a lot of superhero movies. Yeah, I, I mean, I would definitely agree with you that it's something you don't see. But this on the same coin, I think it was the most boring power. I think she just blows wind and throws things really accurately with that wind. <laughs> that's yeah. that's the that's the power element to it. She also has a really cool like flying animation type thing. Yes, but that was kind of my only problem with the movie was oh, interesting because the two there was those because like if there's anything wrong, there's not a lot of weaknesses with the movie. But I'm thinking like well, Cyclone and Adam Smasher were the only two like real weak points and i wouldn't even adam smasher was almost not a weak point because he was really funny yeah he was almost like i don't want to call i don't want to say i don't want to say they're cop in style but i will say that i don't know if it was the actor's choice or if somebody else directing the movie or a writer or whatever it was this version of adam smasher was definitely inspired by dead ryan uh uh reynolds uh deadpool yeah I there's agree. not a there's not a doubt in my mind about it. Even the mask, like when we were uh, reading the credits, and what was it? Bart and somebody costume design. <laughs> Bart and Kurt. <laughs> yeah, Kurt and Bart, dude. <laughs> no last names. Witness protection program. <laughs> fucking Kurt and Bart. Kurt the costume Bart. design. I was like, well, Kurt and Bart. Did they design the costume for Deadpool? Because it's like the mask is like very similar. surprise. Yeah, super sim- similar. But nonetheless, back to my point. I feel kind of bad bringing Adam Smasher, but they were both really shallow characters. Like they didn't have like, especially for Adam Smasher because he's kind of like a more prominent character more than Cyclone. But nonetheless, both of them like didn't really get any type of like backstory or any type of. Hey, the Fonz came on for Adam Smasher. 
The Fonz did come on for Adam Smasher, and his cool. fucking like 15 part. seconds was solid. It was, it was. <laughs> but I just felt like, and I was talking to this about uh, with Matt, um, the chick they got to play Cyclone, great actor, beautiful too. Again, she, I swear she probably was in the studio for like an hour or two to get and put her on wires. You know, and told her to do some dance moves in the air or whatever and throw her hands up in certain ways. And they were like, all right, that's it. That's all we need. And they just CGI'd the rest of her in the movie. Because, like, every, like, three of her scenes, three of her, like, power scenes looked like they were the exact same filmed uh, choreographed scene, just edited into a different something else. Mm -hmm. Like, when she was flying and when she also did, like, the gust of wind hand gesture up i was like i swear to god i saw that exact same cut in a different scene <laughs> like, so yeah, I, don't I agree with you there it, but it maybe it was I just bad because compared to fucking black adam and dr fate and hawkman they were pretty fucking weak. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Oh man, uh, I one th- one thing I'll defend her a little bit is like the few scenes early on where she isn't in superhero mode. She had like this sort of um, exuberance that reminded me of Jubilee from X Men, which yeah. I enjoyed. Because you you most the problem now with superhero stuff is that because all these Disney <clears throat> uh, studios are in like woman power mode, they tend to make all their female characters like really broody and fucking bad disposition, and everyone owes hate them men. something. Hate, well, hate <laughs> men, all that shit. This chick was it's almost a prerequisite for Marvel's it, female characters. <laughs> at this point, it really feels like it is, and it was nice to see a female character that was sort of just like happy and fun and like in a good mood and like there for the adventure. trying to get dude did, what did, did you pick up on the innuendo innuendos with her and adam smasher oh, she definitely wants dude, to fuck adam smasher. dude she well that was that. clear but like when she dude i was not, i was i was trying to hold back my laughter so hard when they were like flirting with each other in the um the room where they were healing that dude with the nano machines or whatever and mm-hmm. He he was, like, trying to, like, church up her powers, and then she was just like, yeah, but, I mean, you can grow. (laughs) I fucking died, dude. I was like, oh, yeah. It's like I'm growing right now, actually. Say less. (laughs) Damn, girl. And and it's funny you bring that scene up specifically because I think that that's one of, I think, one of the weaker scenes in the entire movie, and it was still fun. It was still, like, a good scene that I wouldn't have said, cut that. You know what I mean? There isn't really any moments in this entire movie where I was thinking this should have been cut. And I feel that way in almost every superhero movie I watch nowadays. Yeah, well, I think that's just like, I I think everyone just is kind of tired of Marvel and they're using superhero movie genre as a scapegoat, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know? I think that's really what people are like illusioned by because I mean, these is this is the is there anything between Joker and Black Adam that we've watched from DC? Well, definitely the new Batman. But oh, we, oh, yeah, I forgot, but that's I forget that. that that's technically not in the same universe, though. They haven't oh, explained yeah, that, yeah. so <laughs> it's like I don't really count that, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I really don't understand that <laughs> spooky action at a distance. I'm g- man. Yeah, what I is that going to be? Because they even showed Ben Affleck's Batman in this movie. Mm-hmm. They showed his action figures and the posters. So in like they, I think they also like referenced him in the beginning, right? When he was talking about him. Uh, yeah. Didn't it show him for like a quick second? Yes. Uh, well, no, you're thinking you're thinking of the new Shazam trailer we saw before oh, Black Adam. And is that what I was thinking? Absolutely yeah. right. Uh, they showed um, Batfleck, and uh, among all the other big current DC stars, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Superman, all of them. Not Ezra Miller. <laughs> not Ezra Miller. <laughs> Ezra Miller did not make the cut on that one. But I think 
I think it's interesting that uh, there has been a coup d'etat at WB, and in the aftermath, we are starting to clearly see that the Snyderverse, although might not be coming back fully, that kind of side of WB is what came out on top, ultimately. And you can kind of tell just by the way they treated Shazam 2 in that trailer and the way they did Black Adam. Uh, I don't want, we're not in spoilers yet, so I won't exactly say why in Black Adam, but there is a reason. So, broadcaster, uh, what'd you think about the music in this movie? Because I was kind of surprised at how good it was. I fucking can't stand the shit anymore. Really? Yeah, I can't stand fucking top 100 hit songs from the fucking 80s fucking playing and fucking... I wasn't talking I just, about like, that. It's cool I was music. talking about Don't the orchestra, the orchestral score. Oh. Yeah. You're talking about for like the fight music and shit? Well, everything except for what you're talking about. Like, okay, yeah. Because it, it, oh, like, it was good. Yeah, it was yeah, like Hans was... Zimmer style. It, yeah. Hans Zimmer didn't do it, but it you would have swore that it was Hans Zimmer's like son or something. Like it was very <laughs> similar and very good. No, yeah, that was super good. Especially uh, the score when... Um, Hawkman. I'm oh, sorry, I can't, I can't really say that. Never yeah. mind. But, well, <laughs> Hawkman does something cool and special at the end, and it's mm-hmm. like the the score when that starts is pretty dope. Yeah, all the big moments. I noticed that the pop, the kind of like the the Guardians of the Galaxy OST, which is what I'll call those from now. That's on. what I really. That's uh, kind of what I hate. Is like it I was mean, cool the Guardians, originally, but yeah, it, it's yeah the Guardians of the Galaxy was made it cool, and then everyone else ruined it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's yeah. all I'll say about that. <laughs> yeah, I it sucks notice. because painted painted black is a really good song, and the scene was super cool. But when that song was playing, all I could do, I just wanted to throw up in my mouth. I'm just like, oh, my God. And part of it, too, (laughs) I I get it. It's Black Adam. The song is painted black. I get it. But the problem is that song has been fucked out so hard over the last 40 Dude, years that's... Twisted Metal used that fucking song dog. Dude, Twisted every... Metal <laughs> I've heard that song in like a hundred different video games, TV shows movies, like you name it I've just seen it so many commercials so many times, it's just like yeah. uh, not again guys let's rest on that one okay <laughs> but uh, I did like the way I'll defend their um uh, Guardians of the Galaxy OST a little bit in other places. I really liked it with a certain character that was comedic in the movie. That every time he did some hilarious shit, one of this kind of sort of goofy pop song came on. And it was kind of a running joke in the movie. I liked the way they used that. That was very... Mysterious sounding, especially at the end, <laughs> the final time they do it, uh, it. It was one of the points of the movie I laughed the hardest. I think, and that's another thing I'll say about this movie is more genuine laughs than I've had watching any superhero movies since at least Thor Ragnarok. Maybe Guardians of the Galaxy one. I, I'm not sure. But it's it's at least five years. There's no like there's definitely no way anything in the last five years has made me laugh as much. There's some true, genuine comedy gold in this movie at times. Yeah, for sure. I think this is gonna probably it's hard to tell because there's such like a contingency or a contingent element out there <laughs> trying to bring <laughs> D C E U down. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like it's just every t- like when you told me everyone like the critics were talking shit about Black Adam already. Like I'm so desensitized, I just don't even look at it anymore. But when you told me, I was almost surprised because I was just like, already doesn't it come out today? Mm-hmm. Like they're already talking shit about it. They're not even letting people go to the theaters. Mm-hmm. So like go check it out. They're already like it's just dog shit. Don't even go see it. <laughs> Oh, dude, it was so It's it was wild so to me. <laughs> yeah, I was, and it was kind of making me worry a little bit, but then I kept telling myself, well, these are the same people that, like, right... Told us there was WMDs in Iraq. <laughs> <laughs> and that Rings of Power wasn't trash, <laughs> which is about the same level of lie, I would estimate. I don't know about you. <laughs> this is a yellow cake level lie. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 
But yeah, it's 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 crazy. This movie when I first looked yesterday, it had like a thirty two percent Rotten Tomato score. And then today I look at it, it's up to forty three percent. But then you look at the audience score, which just came out today, obviously, because the movie just came out. Audience score sitting at a cool ninety percent. So it's just like you look at that and you're just like, okay. There's got to be some agenda involved here because clearly you guys tried to flood negative reviews to bomb this movie, to bury this movie. And that is proven by the fact the audience score immediately jumps to the 90th percentile. Like, there's no fucking way. <laughs> well, I'm surprised it's only 90. That's a It's a really good movie. Yeah, I... I agree. Two hours and it two hours long and it went by fast. It mm-hmm. wasn't like it wasn't one of those things where you're checking the time to see when it ends. No, not at all. It uh it went along well. I think the only part of the movie I w- thought kind of went a little too long was the very, very beginning, which is like sort of the backstory. Well, kind of part of the backstory, which is another thing I'll say with this movie is it did a good job giving you some backstory and then later on in the movie kind of being like, nah, we were kind of lying to you. Here's the real version of the the backstory. And then kind of again, like, nah, the lie was also a lie. Now <laughs> we lied about how we were lying. This is kind of really how it went down. Actually, it is kind of funny too, because it all relies on you not thinking somebody could be a certain size mm-hmm. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. you're like well hold on a second that could wait. and there you then they you see his face you're like son of a bitch son they got me bitch. <laughs> CG, cgi cgi <laughs> is very advanced now and you will understand yeah, that after you watch black adam <laughs> it was right like when they when they connect the dot i was like that doesn't make god damn it god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit but uh yeah i think uh Overall, this is my favorite movie of the year so far. Uh, there's still a few to come out. We haven't, I haven't watched Hell. I don't know about you, but I haven't watched the new Hellraiser yet. Uh, I'm ho- holding out hope that'll be good. I haven't. Wait we'll a minute. See. There's a new Hellraiser. Oh yeah, the new Hellraiser movie came out last week, man. Clive Barker. He, uh, I think he's involved, but it's what? Uh, it's not like he's not directing it or anything. But I think well, yeah, he's he, like eighty years old, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, so was Ridley Scott, but it didn't stop him from directing fucking uh, Raised by Wolves. <laughs> yeah, dude. well, <laughs> at least a couple too episodes. soon, too <laughs> soon, dude. Rest in power. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I don't know about you, but this, I think this is my movie of the year so far. Oh, yeah, for sure. No doubt about it. No doubt. Well, definitely superhero movie of the year. Mm-hmm. That's that for sure. Even a, like, yeah, that's almost even. That's almost like uncontested. Like, there was. That's hard. It's hard because Batman was really good. That's that's the only other one I would even put in the same like league. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I guess. I guess Multiverse of Madness. I'd also put in the same league. But that movie, it was good, but it had some like kind of serious problems with it. But it was still good, I'd say. Yeah, it had Marvel problems. As well. Yeah. <laughs> Black Adam is just good, good. Like, there's no real problems with anything. Uh, other, I have, like, some really minor gripes, but really not not much. So this is uh, DC returning to power. I think Black Adam, it, it's kind of interesting. I think Black Adam really is kind of usurping the throne from Marvel right now when Marvel's at its weakest it's a smart move. Mm-hmm. It's a fucking really smart move. I'll tell you that. It's just interesting to see who they launch with the success of Black Adam, you know? Because... Young upstart named Pierce Brosnan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say this. We'll talk about it more in the spoiler section, because, yeah. But uh, I don't think we've seen the last of Pierce Brosnan. As mm, interesting crack seller theories here we go i don't think it's so crack if you read it <laughs> if you read enough comics like it's, it's, it's only one out of 500 <laughs> bidens yeah this is not this isn't self-deprivation tank hunter biden <laughs> quite yet okay dude all right well we um, are looking up prices though <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Well, uh, yeah. So before we get into spoilers, I'm guessing you're giving this an enthusiastic thumbs up. Oh, yeah, dude. This is getting the Charlie Murphy, dude. Hell of a Charlie Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Unity. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, great movie. Go see it. Do not listen to the fucking critics. Uh, fucking critics can go suck fucking gas in the fucking elevator. Fuck them. They're fucking you know, I nuts, don't think dude. I've <laughs> ever in my life actually read a critic review. Like, ever. And I don't think, uh, to further that, I don't think I've ever heard someone talk about a critic review or score of a movie or whatever and said to myself, I'm not going... Well, it's not going to trump the thought that I wanted to play it or watch it to begin with. I've never mm. had that thought pass my head. Yeah. You know, where it's like, Oh God, they said that. Okay. Yep. That's, <laughs> that's the insidiousness of sites like rotten tomatoes because they weaponize the human, uh, sort of behavior where humans kind of headline hunt and they look for really quick facts that they can like, run with take and not have to invest a bunch of time reading some dudes like all these rotten tomato reviews i guarantee you almost all of them have one fiftieth the traffic of the actual rotten tomatoes website where people just go on see a percentage score and they're like oh that means it's good i'm gonna go watch it you know it takes two seconds they don't have to read 15 different reviews that all have 15 paragraphs of text and I just if don't you believe those that. people exist, like what, those people exist, they, they go on Rotten Tomatoes and they're like, "Oh, Batman, good. Uh, oh, yeah, Batman, Batman, bad." Dude, I mean, I think like what? People are kind of on to it now, but Rotten Tomatoes for a period in like the mid 2010s was like one of the most popular websites on the entire internet. Broadcaster Nichols. It's gone down since then, but at one time, it was up there. Like in the very yeah, tippity dude. top, and we used to have to call one eight hundred collect. And fucking, <laughs> I still do. You that. know, Richard Dean Anderson helped us with that a couple times, <laughs> multiple times. All right, <laughs> but we don't have to do that anymore, Listen, dude. We're Every- more civilized. We're an advanced. <laughs> we're a more advanced species now. We don't need to go to Rotten Tomatoes <laughs> and fucking hear the two hundred copies of robert ebert or whatever the fucking guy's name was <laughs> wanna be rest, in they were him. rest in peace it's like damn broadcaster so this is like this is like uh what's that what's that goddamn plan on star wars where they cloned everybody uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh god camino yep, yeah camino, fucking t- t- ron tomatoes is like Camino for Robert Egret, dude. <laughs> dude. <laughs> Everyone wants to be that fucking guy. And they're like, oh, dude, <laughs> I'm just trying to like. It's just such a clown type mentality. Like, I just I can't imagine these people are not washing clown makeup off their face every fucking night because, <laughs> like, how can you take yourself seriously when you're when you're going on Rotten Tomatoes and you're just like, honey, honey, re- <laughs> refund the tickets. <laughs> that man's bad. not good. <laughs> it's, it's not good. And then your wife just looks at you in disgust. She's like, are you sure? <laughs> it's it's not good. <laughs> it has a 10. What's the what do they call it? A, a nine, a 10 percent rotten or whatever you fucking oh, said. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's um, rotten, fresh or certified fresh. So rotten is anything so below 65% and then fresh is like 65% to 90%, I think. And then anything above 90% is certified fresh, whatever the fuck that's <laughs> supposed to mean. Uh, cert- yeah, certified by a litany of fucking college <laughs> dropouts with no talent. <laughs> uh, yeah, get the fuck out of here. You're, you're ready is that, wait a minute. Are the Wait a minute. Is that what the the reviewers are? I thought these reviewers were like accredited critics or something. They are, man. That's what critic movie. Do think about movie critics. Like you don't go to college to be a movie critic. A movie critic is someone who failed at doing something else, and they're like, "Well, I can be an opinionated jackass about stuff. I'll be a movie be a critic." <laughs> I can totally bomb score a fucking children's movie because I have the power to do it. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, you ready to get into some spoilers? Yeah. 
All right, broadcaster. Uh, so let's talk about the beginning of this movie. 2600 BC. And we... <laughs> no, 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 no. BCE. BCE. <laughs> they said that you didn't see that? <laughs> it's BCE, dude. <laughs> I couldn't tell you what that means. But <laughs> Maybe um, they mean before Christ extended. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, so this... Uh takes place in a I'm guessing this is like a fictional country like Wakanda, right? Kondok. <laughs> it's, yeah. Uh, it's like it's like a Wakanda without all of like the cartoon bullshit. Uh m- you know, kind of more like a real Middle Eastern country or uh, North African country kind of. Yeah. Uh and uh the whole backstory is just like them my, having slaves mining some fucking Eternium ore to make some fucking evil demon crown. Um, and we sort of see... Pretty this generic little, stuff. Yeah, it's <laughs> very generic. And I, honestly, I was worried in the very beginning of this movie. Like, that that intro sequence had me kind of like, oh, fuck, were the critics right about this shit? God damn. <laughs> uh, uh, not the Rotten Tomato. <laughs> <laughs> uh, luckily, is the second the intro backstory thing ends, the movie gets great and stays great all the way through. But this beginning part, I don't know if you're with me on this or not, was the weakest part of the movie, and like you said, a little bit generic. Uh, yeah, it definitely was generic, I will say that, but they did have some good comedic relief to like mix it up. Like uh, the uncle, the fat uncle comedic relief, he was pretty funny in the beginning. And also the, when they, because I pointed, I kind of thought this right at the bat when S- Samir, he ends up being the bad uncle. Right. And uh, uh, the bad uncle. I don't think I think they were Samir, like work right? associates. I don't think they were an Ishmael, as you're talking about. Uh, who's oh, yeah. Vil- he ends up being the villain of the movie. Yeah. Which Samir, which yeah. I one of the I don't talk in the theater much, but it's one of the few times I whispered to you. I was like, I knew that motherfucker was. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. He just well, gave off. It was so <laughs> obvious. <laughs> like <laughs> he was thirsting after that crown. <laughs> you could see it, dude. <laughs> you could see it. Yeah. Like uh, <laughs> where Samir go. He's claustrophobic. <laughs> he, <laughs> you know, Zamir. He he had straight up Billy Zane from Titanic vibes. He like, did, dude, that's so funny. <laughs> you said that because when I saw him, I was like, man, he is kind of like a Muslim Billy Zane <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> he kind of he totally. could be the he could be Bollywood Phantom, dude. Oh, <laughs> he, for sure. Dude, Bollywood for Phantom sure. would be lit as fuck, dude. <laughs> They need to do that. Uh, Hollywood <laughs> Phantom, bro. Uh, so, so staying with kind of the negatives on this movie early on, I'll get get them out of the way. Um, Condock in the present day hey, after we, after we get past the twenty six hundred BC shit, which really like all that beginning twenty six hundred BC part really was just super lame, but it did set up. The twist at the end, which I enjoyed. I didn't see it coming. And it was it was genuinely What? Just, is that Ishmael was a descendant? No, 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 no. Because that, that, I saw that, that uh, go for a while away. That uh that um the rock or I mean oh, what the hell yeah, was it? Yeah. Teth Adam. Teth Adam wasn't the kid. The way they portray the scene in the beginning is they show it like uh um Black Adam is this little kid who gets teleported by wizards right as he's about to get executed. And they yeah. did that on purpose to fuck with you. And then at the end of the movie, they're like, no. Yeah. That, that wasn't the kid. And the kid ends up being uh, played by the actor who plays college age rock in the young rock TV series, which uh, we talked about is as well. It's very uh, interesting because he's a no name actor. So obviously the rock likes the kid and he's like, Hey, Hey, kid, come over here and be in a fucking amazing superhero movie with me. Be in the best goddamn DCEU movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, but anyway, other other than that part, the 
the beginning where we see the inter gang. Now, did you were you like me and every time they said the word inter gang, you cringed internally? Uh, I didn't really cringe, but I just kind of like you know, like when your mind goes blank, you just go to a white room. You know, I just that's kind of where I went every time they said inter gang because it just didn't make sense to me. <laughs> Like, yeah. The inter gang. <laughs> it's what is the inter gang exactly? <laughs> and yeah, and also, and why do they have light speed bikes? <laughs> that's a great question. That it's is like never Tony's, explained. That's like Tony Stark level tech right there, mm-hmm. and they just got a couple. They got a fleet of those. <laughs> Where are they coming from? Yeah. And who the hell is Ishmael working with? That's a, that's another thing we don't really know. He's on a phone call at one point where he's like sort of talking to, I'm assuming it's the leader of Enter Gang now. No, those were the bike people. Those were like the member because they're the other scene where they were talking. He was talking directly to him as well. We're in your way. Wasn't there a scene where he was on the phone, though, with someone? Yeah. And then it cut to the people on the bike. And they're like, we're on our way. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I'm, I I guess I just fucking didn't put that together. Uh, yeah. Either way, Inner Gang is a stupid name, sort of like the Justice Society. I give that one more of a pass because it's like, eh, comic books always have like weird like Justice yeah. Friends and Justice Society and shit like that where you're just like, oh, okay, whatever. But Inner Gang, like, what really? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, I think I'm not sure. I think the Justice Society actually outdates the Justice League. It probably does. It probably yeah. does. <laughs> it sounds like it does. It sounds straight <laughs> yeah, up it, like something yeah. that came from a comic from 1959. Yeah, it's uh, like a gold, a silver age type <laughs> comic thing for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the whole beginning is about them trying to find the crown of Sabak and they do it. <laughs> the and... crown of Sabak. All the names in this, dude. They just sound like <laughs> names like a 12-year-old is trying, like, in his head thinks he has a super dope fantasy story he's creating. <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to tell everybody the names of the characters and stuff. <laughs> yeah. And Adam and then Sabak comes. And fucking... <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, the female lead with... Uh, Hmm, what did you call him? Uh, Arab Billy Zane? What, what was his name? <laughs> Muslim Billy Zane. Muslim Zane. Billy Zane. Uh, you know, they're in there by themselves, and she's like, hey, what happened to uh, the other guy that should be here? And he's like, oh, you know, claustrophobic. And we we see him mm-hmm. fall off a cliff in front of the fat guy who's holding watch outside the cave because he's got a bad knee. You huh. know, he's holding watch. And... Uh, we clearly know that this like this is this is the point where if you're paying attention and you have a at least a twenty percent effective spidey sense, you're like Ishmael's up to some shit. <laughs> this Ishmael's a shady <laughs> dude. Uh and uh yeah, this leads to uh them being inner <laughs> inner gang banged by inner gang <laughs> in the in the uh in the throne wizard room, whatever you want to call that, where uh the throne or the the crown was and also where black adam's grave slash prison was and so uh you know she gets caught by inner gang and it, he she asked i like this too he's like you got any final words and she just looks down and she just starts enchanting a spell at the ground and he's just like what the fuck you talking about bitch <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed that part. That was funny. <laughs> and uh and that's where Black Adam comes out and uh we get our first taste of the action in this movie, which really sets the tone because I think basically all the action scenes in this movie are just perfect, but this first one because he's like fresh um out of his prison and he's kind of more like whimsical early on and is just kind of like what the fuck is this at least to some funny stuff like the way he sort of treats well he was he got summoned dude his only his request was to vanquish the enemies of the <laughs> he summoned yeah. him <laughs> yeah yeah like like they're all like open fire and they just all start going off on him and he just kind of floats up whimsically and goes your magic is weak. No, he grabs one of their bullets and he yeah. says, your magic is weak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of, one of the great early lines uh, of the movie. 
Yeah, Rock has a lot of good lines in this movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. I feel like he's trying to like be like the one-liner action star of this generation at this point. Like he's trying to be the Arnold of the 2020s, I guess. Well, you keep doing it. <laughs> yep. Keep doing it, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's weird too because you kind of like look at the Rock and. You're like, oh, the wrestler's trying to act. Then you think about it, it's like, fuck, he started acting in, like, 2010. He's been acting for fucking t- almost 13 years now. So it's Oh, not yeah, like, dude. It's not fucking like the he's... Fucking The Rundown and fucking... Those were some of his first movies. With, yeah. Uh, Chris Williams? Is that his name? Scott? Chris? Scott? Scott? Chris Williams? I don't know. Yeah, yeah Stifler. You're talking about Stifler, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Um, Ethan Scott Phillips? No, that's someone else. Ethan Scott Phillips? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the guy from... Uh, <laughs> didn't uh, you 2 and Bono call that kid a pussy in South Park? <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> also starring Brian Botano. <laughs> uh, so so what, what did you think about this whole uh, part of the movie in general? Uh, I mean, it was solid. It was good. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't really knock any part of this movie. You know, it's it's pure action. You're getting the metaphorical people's elbow all the way through this fucking movie. <laughs> I mean, as far as as far as just like an opening scene for a hero. It's probably the the some of the best action I've seen since like Iron Man, mm-hmm. you know, where you're just like you're getting introduced to a character and it lives up to the hype, you know. It isn't just like lackluster. It isn't like fucking Ant Man and the Wasp, or it's like fucking sorry Moon Knight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, Moon Knight was pretty. I mean, I don't want to dog on Moon Knight too bad, but this wasn't my Moon Knight. Sorry. No. No, I the only part that really saved Moon Knight for me was the Megazord battle at the end. That was sick. yeah, that was pretty dope, wasn't it? <laughs> but it, there's some real rough patches in Moon Knight for sure. Yeah, uh, <laughs> not are you so a much. superhero? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, I guess overall, the this you can kind of call this the first quarter of the movie. And basically this action scene extends out outward, you know, the girl, um, black Adam sort of indirectly saves her. I don't know. It's kind of directly. It, oh, definitely. He, directly. he cuts a rock in half. So it doesn't fall and crush he cuts, her. Or he blasts that dude. Yeah. So I guess he does directly. He raised the life. eyebrow on that fucking rock. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then he like leaves and then he he's greeted by helicopters and this is where the paint it black song starts that you uh dude that cut out. where he's like right on the side of the helicopter and just smiling was actually pretty fucking oh, terrifying i'm not going to lie hell like, yes just, this is the way they cut that i was like that would literally just tip, make me piss my pants mm-hmm. i think <laughs> yeah yeah black adam is really interesting for a few reasons one He's an anti-hero. He's not like a fucking goody two shoes. Two, he has multiple powers that when are all combined together create a very terrifying superhero slash supervillain, whatever you want to call him. Like the the fact that he has basically the speed of the flash, and he has like Emperor Palpatine's fucking lightning powers. To the point where, like, he can, like, do an Omni move where it just sends Palpatine lightning in every direction for, like, 18 miles and just eviscerates everything. Like, he just has this really interesting kit of abilities that when combined yeah. with his well, he's personality and that smile you talked about where he just did, like, the flash super speed right at the window of the helicopter turns, <laughs> smiles, and just, like... <laughs> It's weird because I grew up with The Rock, but like when I was watching that movie at times, I'm just like, God damn, dude, who are you? Yeah, it's it's interesting because I think Rock, I don't know if he actually studied the character a whole lot, but they call Black Adam an antihero, but he's kind of a villain. Kind <laughs> of, yeah. He's, he's, he's pretty much like, especially early Black Adam. 
he like in the comics and stuff like that there's not a whole lot of redeeming qualities to black adam besides his origin story where he was his whole planet was taken from him or whatever but uh he, it's only like later in fact i think it's like around like when they started doing the injustice comics and then like the people that do Mortal Kombat did the Injustice video games and stuff. I think that's like right around that era of comics is when Black Adam started to get this anti-hero tinge to him, you know, mm. like he's, uh, so it's a pretty recent thing. Interesting. So I, I'm, I'm wondering in the, in the whole history of comics, that being said, but I wonder if that's where the rock kind of got inspiration for his Black Adam character, you know, cause some of the scenes, man, it's I was like, I was really scratching my head. I'm like, dang, is is Black Adam even gonna be considered a good guy at the end of this movie, or are they like actually gonna set him up to be a problem? Because I mean, obviously, and then we'll talk about the end credit scene a little bit more. Well, I mean, there's not a whole lot to talk about. I guess we can just say it right now. I mean, Superman shows up, you know, and <laughs> everyone was it, waiting. Our Superman, not some like, yeah. Henry Cavill Superman shows Superman. up, right? Yeah, but I mean, just to get back to the point, you know, like everyone knew that was going to happen at some point. It was a real cool surprise to see it happen so soon. But nonetheless, Black Adam and him are going to, you know, go toe to toe, and Superman's supposed to be the good guy. Mm-hmm. So like. I mean, sure, you can have two good guys fight it out, but for how long? And if you're going to, like, set up a big fight, like a movie fight, like, that's the whole point of it. Like, it seems to be where they're going, the direction they're going. Yeah. Then that makes me think that they're going to make Black Adam more of a villain than a good guy in the grand scheme of things. I hope so, because I really enjoy the the villainous parts of Black Adam. Like, there are a few parts in this movie where he kind of becomes less like the the anti-hero version and like at the very end when like uh they kind of do like their victory lap after they take down um our boy uh (laughs) muslim billy zane in his transform uh his his morbid time form uh (laughs) He kind of like has this scene with Adam Smasher. Adam Smasher's like, "Well, we made a good team," and and he and, and Black <laughs> Adam for one second becomes the Rock again. For one second, he's like, "We made a hell of a good team." It, it sounded like him from like Fast and Furious or something. Yeah. Like the way he talked, like, and it was about only family. for this one. It's, it's about family. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, that was the only moment though I felt like that in the entire movie. Other than that, we had mostly villain black adam like kind of like in varying degrees we had kind of like light light touch villain and then we had like fatality villain at dude, he tore times. the final boss in half oh dude, that was, <laughs> dude in the very in that very beginning not like, in half he, sorry he split him yeah. he split him in two <laughs> in that very beginning he does like the fucking uh the scorpion like uppercut like head thing and then like fucking runs lightning through him in like fucking uh, evaporates his blood and bones and shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> you think there's some epic kills in this movie where you're just like, man, I would love to see the R-rated version of this. I hope to hell they keep that footage and they release an unrated version someday. Because I yeah. want to know. I want to know how far they took it. Dude, that one of those scenes. I think one of those scenes they actually uh, took inspiration from uh, Secret Wars from Marvel, the comics, because oh, that really? big o- the opening scene where he like grabs one of the minions and just literally shocks him into like a skeleton and then just crushes him. <laughs> 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 Fucking God Emperor Doom in Secret Wars 2015 did that to Thanos, and it was one of the coolest fucking scenes in the world, dude. Like, wow. <laughs> God, like Thanos, like punches through this like sh- the this wall that's and literally the wall is Ben Grimm from the Fantastic Four manipulated by God Emperor Doom into pretty much stretching as this great China great wall of China type thing through this whole world mm-hmm. and it's keeping out like the hordes of like other timelines and, sh- and nonetheless it's convoluted but fucking Thanos leads an army to break through the Ben Grimm wall to go after God Emperor Doom (laughs) and fucking he breaks through it and Thanos is like ha I am mighty 
I broke the wall. <laughs> and like in God of Verdun sitting on his throne. He's like, I gotta go take care of something. And he just like teleports down in front of Thanos. <laughs> and he's just like, they say you're a tyrant. Okay, and Thanos is about to talk some shit, and he Doom just plunks his hand into his throat and just turns him into a skeleton and crushes him. And he's like, "It doesn't seem like one anymore." Just walks away. Damn, that sounds like a good comic that I missed, dude. It's one of my favorite panels in comic history. Sometimes I open up the comic just to look at it because it's such a good scene. Hell yeah, yeah. Uh... Yep, so we get to the other kind of beginning of the movie where we get introduced to all of the quote-unquote good guys from the Justice Society. Um, this is this kind of reminded me a little bit of more of a Marvel movie for a second, the way it was kind of structured. They're just like assembling the heroes and stuff and going to like a very X-Men-ish looking a uh, state of the art jet funded yeah, by who knows who. <laughs> yeah, which also looks very X Men ish, by the way. It looked like a dude, the way the head detached it, dude. Like, I swear to God, there's some sexual innuendos <laughs> in this movie. I can't, we're just going over people's heads. <laughs> uh, I mean, hey, man. That ship looked like a penis. <laughs> All right, dude. They put, they, I mean, they put penises on the cover of uh, My Little Mermaid, so like. Of course, they're not going to be afraid to do it in Black Adam. It's like, I love Smoochie, man. It's like, it's a rocket ship. <laughs> oh, shit. This is where we're introduced to, like, the, the Justice Society with Cyclones, Adam Smasher, uh, Hawkman, and Dr. Fate, who, in my estimation, is the best character other than Black Adam in this movie. I think, wow, man, that's so hard, man. They're all, it was a pretty solid acting. I want to say Adam Smasher took it out of the four <laughs> of them. Because he just had some of the strongest presence, you know? Like, he just came and he's like, it's my turn? Okay. He's, just like, he's like, am I supposed to hold the fist down? How long am I supposed to hold this down? Okay. You better hold that down, boy. He just had, he just had really good chemistry with everybody in every scene so yeah i almost want to say he actually was like the best but yeah dude pierce brosman especially with like the way they uh made dr fate's powers look and sound so awesome so when he did that illusion on black adam initially and he was doing like this flying backwards like fucking like I don't even know. It's just twirl thing as like the dimension was shipped. That was so dope. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That was so cool. Yes. Uh, And also the effects when he like imprisons people with his time magic on the ground when like they have like pretty much like beams of light shooting through through them. Like that's super cool too. Hell yeah. I loved the voice effect they did on him too when he has the helmet on. Dude, it, I don't know how many people listen to this, watch, or have ever seen Venture Bros, but like, <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was kind of almost bringing a tear to my eye, like seeing how much of a meta level play this was, because, like, there's a character in Venture Bros that's pretty much inspired by dr strange and dr fate <laughs> he like looks like dr strange but he acts like dr fate <laughs> and, and, and like seeing pierce brosman like say some of those lines with like the echo in the helmet and shit like it was almost like they were aware of it, it was like no we're taking this one step further in the 4d chess game dude because <laughs> like, every time he said something i was like they there's no way they're not aware that this guy sounds i'm forgetting the name now for the character but it's dr uh Os- osmian maybe hmm. i f- i forget in the in venture bros but <laughs> yeah Pierce Brosman like literally was him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we're basically, we're talking about the second um, real action scene of the movie where Black Adam fights the Justice Society. What'd you think about this fight scene overall? I mean, they're all so good. It's really hard to pick between them, but like, where do you rank this one? Because we have a really cool team battle. Like you, you brought up Adam Smasher with, it's like, how long am I supposed to hold my hand here? And you had uh doctor, what you just talked about with Dr. Fate with the elude, like that was really sick. Uh, what did you think about this fight scene in general? 
That was awesome. I mean, it, it's hard to like. There wasn't one bad fight scene in the movie, to be honest. No. It was probably one of the cooler ones, if I'm really being objective, because I don't think Doctor Fate did anything really big after that, besides no, this, this his was, final yep. scene. Yep. You know, yep. Like exactly. this, that, that illusion thing was his big move for the movie. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if I'm remembering correctly. Other than no, nah, I mean that's not true. They're trying to make his clone move seem like the big move, but. To be honest, that fucking Genjutsu was way cooler. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, power-wise, I think there's some cool powers overall. Uh, the the villain when uh, Muslim Billy Zane becomes uh, Satan. Uh, he has a couple of cool moves. The, one of the things I really fucking liked was when he sat on the throne and then, like, his chest erupted in power, like, involuntarily, and it shot that beam up and, like, broke, like, a hell portal into the sky. That was sick as fuck. I loved that effect, whatever that was. It reminded me of something, that, like, from World of Warcraft or something, like a really cool sort of, like fantasy effect that you wouldn't really see in these types of movies usually. Yeah. I mean, it kind of reminded me of the portal from the first Avengers where all the fucking Chikari, is that what they call them? The Chikari (laughs) were flooding through, you know, where Iron Man goes through. Yeah, I guess it's kind of like that. It didn't, it didn't remind me too much of that, but you know, it was red instead of blue, you know, it was similar. <laughs> oh, uh, so I guess Ishmael slash uh, whatever Sabak. Sabak. He he. I guess. He, Mom, is, it's Sabak. <laughs> is he just the leader of Inner Gang? Like, or was he? <laughs> I, I think I'm, that's. I'm pretty sure. That is where they were going. It's it's either he was the leader or he's like really high up in the power chain because he clearly was like a, a leading commander at the very least. But now that you say that he was talking on the phone to his own underlings and it kind of makes me think that he was the leader now. Because we yeah, didn't see and they else. don't explain where they get the funding at all for all those items, all the gear they had. No, no. But uh, I, I believe that the ancient emperor king whatever that gets murked by black adam in the very beginning of the movie i believe he is played by the same actor that plays ishmael i think they just make him look really different with like the hairstyle and the makeup and shit i think it's the same <laughs> actor though. i'm pretty That'd sure that would be pretty fun <laughs> i'm pretty sure it is uh yeah um yeah so we kind of go we after the fight they have like a team up They're like oh we had to team up to go save the the kid which is like the skateboarding bart simpson muslim bart simpson i guess uh he's really really into black adam and uh gets kidnapped and black adam kind of is like you know it's all about family and he decides he's going to go rescue him and uh the justice society tags along uh, what did you think about this? I, I really like another you got another humorous moment here where like they're they're creating this really detailed plan how to like break in and then they look to the left and they just see Black Adam just annihilating at everything <laughs> instead of going with their plan. You're like, oh, we can just do that. <laughs> I think <laughs> that was actually pretty funny. It happened so fast. Yeah. When the shield goes down, I was like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> he just, he just, you're just going to explosion mode? That's a, that was quick. <laughs> yeah, and Hawkman like, gets really pissed off about it, which is kind of like a running gag in the, the movie. Is like Hawkman gets really offended by Black Adam's uh, approach. Uh, his approach. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> And, well, uh, I mean, to Black Adam's defense, I, I mean, you can't have a teammate just fucking exploding on people. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's one thing to be like, yeah, he's been known to do that, but like, fucking, it's like the, <laughs> it's like going on the second time, it's about to be the third time, or something. I don't know. Yeah. And, and he's doing know, it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> And they get the kid, and they end up killing Ishmael, and it's kind of like one of those false endings where you think he won, 
but it also serves to demonstrate to uh, the female lead and uh, Muslim Bart Simpson that, oh, this guy actually is a bad guy. And Black Adam realizes that they realize that, and he, like, leaves in shame, and then it eventually leads to him telling Hawkman, okay, I'll go into your fucking prison, I'm a piece of shit. Uh, what did you think about that whole sequence? Uh, it seemed, like, unnecessary, to be honest, but I get it. I'm trying to, like, have, like, a hero-building montage moment, or, like, you know mini arc in the movie you know or it's the redemption the the quick 15 minute redemption arc you know yeah i get it i get it maybe it was a half an hour i'm not quite sure how long <laughs> it took took him to get taken to from the moment he said shazam and became a scrawny rock <laughs> and then put in then they dived into the water and to get put into a secret underwater base just to put him into a casket filled with water and a breathing apparatus. <laughs> I'm just not quite sure how that worked, but nonetheless, I think that, and then to Dr. Fate going through the realms to break his casket open and convince him to be proud of himself. <laughs> um, I think that took maybe like what 15 20 minutes, it wasn't long. And that's one of this movie's strengths is it doesn't linger, it doesn't, no, linger it does not. All. Like, it's just like it's because they know what the secret sauce was. It was Dwayne the Rock Johnson do, do you kicking ass and chewing bubble rock. gum. <laughs> they can't uh, have fucking scrawny rock on the screen that long <laughs> for sure. For sure. Uh, I think my only real problem with this sequence is how easily black adam said shazam and offered his surrender to uh, just because of like the way that there were kid wasn't even dead he got like a scuff on him yeah (laughs) and it's like the the way that they built up his his sort of adversarial relationship with hawkman up until that point like like i mean the last time he brought it up he's like how about i rip off your little pansy wings bitch (laughs) like that's what he said the last time and then he goes okay i'll do it like it's just like "Mm, I get like they're trying to like point it so like oh no he he does have good in him like that's kind of what they're trying to do with that like demonstrate that he can be a hero or you know sort of like a anti-hero edging on hero I think is what they're trying to say with that but you you know like as soon as he goes in there you're just kind of like he is not finishing that this movie in that thing <laughs> like yeah, there's not a chance <laughs> this movie ends with him in that back to tank <laughs> that would be wild well for a minute i honestly thought they were going to kill rock i thought they were i oh, thought that would like, have been a bold just, choice yeah just for a second i was like oh what if, like what if dwayne dies and the kid becomes black adam because no. like because they were kind of setting that up in the beginning with like the necklace and like all that stuff and then then him donning the red cape and wearing it the whole movie yeah like I was I was re- I started to think that was coming for a minute yeah well one of the because the kid has hair too and OG Black Adam has hair so <laughs> it started to make my this, my head turn a little I was like oh wait a minute now we one could the- get the fucking widow's peak here real soon. <laughs> <laughs> one of the downsides to having the rock in this movie is black adam is you know that's not gonna happen because it's the rock like you know the rock spent like five years trying to make this movie happen it was like this huge passion project of his i don't know why exactly but he was obsessed with black adam and he like f- essentially forced this movie to be made and when you think about that, then you think about like the fact that Rock, the Rock is essentially the most bankable star in Hollywood right now. Like other than, no, I think he really is. I think he is the most. I think bankable he said star his son was a huge fan of Shazam. I Maybe think that's, that's originally how he got into it. Maybe that he that's wanted to. Is. Yeah, he wanted to be in a Shazam movie for his kid. You think you would think that if that were the case, though, that uh, he would have actually had more Shazam in the movie. You know what I mean? Like, it yeah. had really, no connection to Shazam other than like the fucking suit and the wizards. Like, he it's... probably was, and then he met Levi, and then he was just like a guy's a map. <laughs> 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 just, 
<laughs> Did you just call him a map? <laughs> yeah, I think that's a map. <laughs> oh, poor Levi. <laughs> Just kidding, Levi. <laughs> uh, <laughs> moving. JK, <right> JK. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think we're having Zachary Levi as a guest anytime <laughs> soon. But, uh, um, yeah, so where are we at there? Um, oh, right. So after they put him in the prison and like they're doing their little victory lap. All of a the sudden, they start researching the crown, and they're like, wait a second, <laughs> it was turned upside down. Oh, it means this. And then, you know, you see um, uh, Muslim Billy Zane come back to life, kind of, or, like, filled with red energy. Then it, like, teleports us to hell, and we see all the demons from the crown, which I really like those demons. I don't know about you, cool. but yeah, those demons really cool. were tight. I like the way they were designed, and they're like, say our name. And he, and he <laughs> Reminded said, me of, like, the prime evils. Yeah, <laughs> Diablo, yeah. Original OG Diablo. Hell yeah, exactly. Uh, and, he, and, you know, he, he yells the name Sabak, and then he is reborn as Sabak, which basically he looks like satan or diablo or some some sort of for, form of that and uh, then we basically are at the end of the movie where like a modern day version of tim curry's satan from legend dude <laughs> oh shit damn he's like a tame, he's like a tame, curry. He's like a t- tame version of that satan <laughs> dude i need to watch legend again i haven't seen that movie since i was like eight that was a fucking great movie uh, so the Justice Society arrives to fight Sabic, but obviously everyone in the theater knows that they're not going to be able to beat him, and eventually Black Adam's going to come. Uh, but we get sort of this uh, interesting twist where uh, Doctor Fate, the entire movie, has been getting this vision of Hawkman dying, and we get to the point where. Uh, Sabak is on the throne in the ruins of the castle, and they're they're all about to go in there. And uh, Doctor Fate stops him, puts up a shield, and he's like, "I've seen you die, and I found a way so that you can live." And he goes up there and he fights uh, Muslim Billy Zane by himself, by his lonesome. And this is the magnum opus of our boy Pierce Brosnan, who will be walking into the sunset because he dies. He gets beaten up. I don't think he died. I I don't. Mm, I was going to bring that up because his death is a little interesting because uh, he kind of poofs into particles, kind of like in Final Fantasy. Like if you ever played a Final Fantasy game, when you kill a monster, (laughs) it doesn't really die. It just sort of like becomes sparklies and floats off. What was the thing in Final Fantasy X? They yeah. were they they all become spirits and then they go to that like dead world that you can go visit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just like FF10. That's a great. That's really what I was thinking of. He's like of. Orin, dude. He's like yeah. he denied it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so I don't know because every like everyone else who dies in this movie gets like ripped in half or like turned into bones and shit. And uh, our boy Pierce kind of has a sort of suspicious death we'll put it that way yeah i dr fates are like a really powerful character too like super super powerful so i think like Mm -hmm. pierce brosman like taking this l i think this is just like an ascendant like the beginning of an ascendance for his character to become more powerful maybe maybe uh i i was pretty sure he was dead at first but then uh after when he, the helmet's eyes glow and help he, fucking hawk man yeah <laughs> and then, and, then <laughs> and then the helmet evaporates yeah. into spirit particles just like pierce brosnan did and you're like well wait a second why did the helmet stay just long enough to defeat sabak and then as soon as sabak's gone it's like it just it just bounces it makes you think there might be a little something to that so yeah. I kind of agree with you on that. But yeah, like in the MCU world, there's like Omega level threats, right? Like Doctor Fate is like an Omega level threat for like the DCU. Goddamn he's, right he is, and that he's fight, very powerful. That fight <laughs> with Sabat kind of de- demonstrates it. Like you know, people have you know talked shit about DC a lot compared to Marvel, and they kind of had a right to. It. 
in the 2010s, Marvel was just dominating DC. But when you look at this fight with Dr. Fate versus Sabak, this fight was cooler than anything I've seen in a Marvel movie in ages. It, the cinematography, the direction, definitely, the way... Definitely a cool since Infinity War Part 1. Definitely. Uh-huh. Like, like the way that, like, the fight would, would... Like, he'd be fighting, and one of his clones would go in, and it would get hit, and then the 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 camera would like go into one of his clones and then like zoom yeah. into his mask and then it would become inside of his mask another version of the fight it's yeah. really hard to explain but when you see it in action it's just like holy fuck that is awesome it's just really fucking cool no yeah it was really well done the cgi for his all of his effects were like super cool yeah. and like i brought it up multiple times the audio for his like double, his double vocals or his echo or whatever you want to call it was super well done. Yes. It was so it made him sound like truly like godly. <laughs> yes, it, it was and that might just be ass. Pierce Brosnan, and I think it's more Pierce it, Brosnan than the audio engineer. But still, it was a really good comprom- or a yeah. complimentary thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep. God, I, I'm so happy that Pierce Brosnan was in this movie. Like that really. It set such a great initial tone to the movie. This is, dude, he just kills me sometimes. Like, what is your helmet telling you? <laughs> Every time I don the mask, I see catastrophe. <laughs> 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 it's, it's like, damn, Pierce. <laughs> damn. Don't, cry, I, don't make me cry, Pierce. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I put on the helmet, I see Sean Bean being killed off again. <laughs> I think I found a way to stop it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, so yeah, Saba kills him, or you know, bunny ear quotes. Fucking kills Johnny Dr. Cage Faith. flame uppercuts him. <laughs> that was badass. Uh, but uh, then you know, Black Adam shows up, and uh, he fucking lays the fucking smackdown uh, on. Sabak and there, there. So there's no real people's elbow here, which I was really hoping for. I was really hoping yeah, this movie would get a really people's elbow for that. <laughs> but, but they did sneak something in that I'm sure a lot of people will miss. But people that saw early rock, especially, will know. Uh, so Sabak had devil horns, right? They these horns looked very similar to bull horns. Now, early rock, um had something called the Brahma bull where he would talk about taking the Brahma bull by the horns. Yeah. yeah that yeah, is yeah. what he does to Savak to kill yep. him. Yeah. <laughs> so that is definitely a reference to early rock, not a people's elbow, not the people's eyebrow, not do you smell what the rock is cooking? But we did get a sort of Brahma bull reference. Yeah, I, one could say almost a deeper cut than the people's yes. elbow. <laughs> yes, Definitely. Definitely. So I was I, really expecting him to do the people's elbow to the throne, though. When he yep. flew up and he started taking that stance, I was like, oh, shit, here we go. And then it <laughs> <laughs> did not happen. <laughs> and uh, I think I wonder if part of that is the WWE at well, WWE yeah. owns the move. It's I possible guarantee. that they own it and they would have had to pay that Vince McMahon <laughs> to use it. I bet you they own the character. They do. That's why he stopped yeah. going by The Rock. He only went yeah. by The Rock in one movie, his first movie, Scorpion King. That yeah. is the only movie he went by The Rock and he immediately switched to Dwayne Johnson because he wouldn't have to pay the WWF any money if he did that. And uh, he has ever since. So I'm guessing, yeah. Does they he have to pay even when own. they call him Dwayne The Rock Johnson? Because that's just a nickname. Like They can't no, I don't legally think so. come after him for that. No, I don't think so. I think as long as in the credits his name is Dwayne Johnson, they they don't have they can't take any money from him. But uh, but yeah, so Black Adam becomes the new ruler and protector of Kondok, and uh, kind of a cringy line from the female lead here, where she's like, "What makes him 
better than a hero is he can do the things you can't when she says that to Hawkman and like I agree with the sentiment and everything but like the way she delivered it was a little uh, it was almost childish yes it, it's <laughs> it very especially much so. for an adult to say because you're just like <laughs> you almost lost your son how many times in this movie yeah. if fucking your brother betrayed you I think Sabak was his bro- or uh, Ishmael was her brother I'm not quite no, sure but... Ishmael I, I want to say Ishmael was like her consort you know what I mean like I think they okay. were probably fucking the okay. way that they the way they acted early on in the movie in the car like they kind of had this weird like we fucked last night in a hotel room energy uh, yeah that's true that's true but they definitely weren't blood related and okay. uh all right all now right. we're at the, right. it's over <laughs> <laughs> not to bring up uh House of the Dragon, but now we're at the credit scene. And... Dude, hold on. Before we go any further, I just remembered when The Rock breaks through the wall, when he wakes up <laughs> and he just sees the TV and fucking the good, the bad, and the ugly is playing. Oh, and he yeah. just, right when the gun's about to fire, he just shoots it and he's like, Wizards. <laughs> Another <laughs> great line. That was amazing. That was like probably one of my favorite moments in the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we, glossed, we glossed over a lot. Like, the the fat guy who is the electrician who's the uncle that guy was the comic relief of the movie and he yeah. was fucking amazing he was really uh, good uh, at the end what my favorite like the scene that made me laugh the absolute hardest was when uh after Dr. Fate heals him and after Sabak has like brought hell on earth and all like the hell zombies are in the streets, he just like comes barreling in in his fucking van, jumps out with a giant fucking metal pipe, and he just looks at uh, his sister and he says, It's okay, I die from electrocution. And he just starts beating the fuck out of all the red zombie guys. That was so fucking awesome. That was a great scene. And it's such, it's like a, such a throwaway little scene that's so small in the grand scheme of this movie but it's fucking brilliant and this movie is full of that shit yeah he definitely stole the show a little bit yeah for being such a small comedic role and that's another thing this movie does great is it doesn't push the comedy too hard it does it in the perfect amounts at the perfect times like they really crack the code on that because a big problem i have with a lot of these new uh, Marvel movies and Marvel TV shows is they just try and cram comedy down your throat constantly where it's like mm, not, not even working. it's like not I don't working. even consider it comedy it's like woke cringe fucking like like in Doctor or Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness dude it's like the moments when it was like it's all about Doctor or uh, America Chavez like finding her powers and stuff like that. Like and there'd be like scenes where it was just like like begging Doctor Strange to like insult her for being a young girl or something, you know, and that's supposed to be the comedy. You mm-hmm. know, it's just like, oh the young girl's talking back to the older man. <laughs> like mm-hmm. ha, 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 ha. Yeah, it's just so fucking dumb. Yeah, there's and that's really that's not even that bad of an example. I think there's way worse examples out there in uh, stuff like She Hulk and uh, other other movies that maybe I didn't watch that. <laughs> may, maybe like Thor: Love and Thunder, for example. There's a, there's a few examples where the comedy is starting to not come out as comedy anymore it's starting to come out really cringy and way overplayed like it's almost like marvel wants every movie to be like the first guardians of the galaxy now because they made one comedy based marvel movie that was good and everyone loved they're like we gotta do that with every movie it's so stupid it's so short-sighted it's very short-sighted because that's what makes that movie special. And if you try to make all the other movies just copy that, what's what's that make Guardians of the Galaxy in the end? Mm. The beginning of the end. <laughs> it's so uh, funny, too, when you really think about that, too, because it's a cabal of pedos in Hollywood. <laughs> making right, go movies, on, go on. <laughs> right? And they make Guardians of the Galaxy, and it's a hit success, and then they go to, they try to repeat that for me in the rest of the movies, all the while trying to get the guy that made that formula out the fucking door for being a <laughs> supposed pedophile. <laughs> 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 
these maps don't make sense, man. I'm telling you, they don't. They don't I can't get a read on them. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> so we have a credit scene, and then we have our obligatory uh, post-credit scene. Um, and it starts off with a drone showing up, doing a hologram of the uh, government chick from the very beginning of the movie who assembles the Justice oh. Society. And she's like, listen Amanda here. Waller. Yeah, listen here, Black Adam. You better not leave that place or I'll end you. Like, going all like, I am woman, hear me roar. And, you know, it's okay. Like, whatever. It's 2022. If that's the worst the movie gets, I'm okay with that. But what I, the part about it I liked was the very end of it where she's she's like, I'll send people from other planets against you, which I like that line. I just didn't like the way it started. The beginning of it was really kind of cringy. But then it's like, you bitch, I got people on other planets I can send out to you. And Black Adam's like, yeah, send them all, bitch. And uh actually just one guy. We got one guy from another planet. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well <laughs> oh <my God>. how, <laughs> he doesn't even really listen to me either. Though, so <laughs> he, he's just there because he wants your autograph. <laughs> uh so so yeah, Henry Cavill shows up, Superman, our Superman. Uh, I mean Christopher Us. Reeves. <laughs> it, I hate saying that because Christopher Reeves is really my Superman, but he was so short lived and he basically died right when I watched the Superman movies. Like I was like when those first came out, I was just born and like two and shit like that. And then like by the time I watched them, it was like right around when he fell off the horse and uh, died. So it, it was short lived and he kind of was my first. But I really, for some weird reason, I view Henry Cavill as my Superman. I can't explain it per se. I just fucking love him as Superman. Man of Steel. I fucking love that movie. I don't give a fuck what any critics have to say. I I Man of Steel is my favorite Superman movie, and I really oh, like yeah. Superman Two. I think Superman Two is a great movie. Man of Steel is my favorite Superman movie. Man of Steel is one of my favorite DC movies. Hell yeah! Fucking I'm the new, guy who they had Man play Zod. Steel. That was Michael so, Shannon, dude. Yeah, Michael Shannon. Michael Zod. Shannon is one of my Fuck. favorite actors ever, all time. Fuck that guy yeah. is an absolute stud. If anyone, anyone that listen to this, I'm t- I, I encourage the hell out of you to go watch Boardwalk Empire mm. and see his performance in that show because it will change your life. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That man deserves a fucking lifetime award for his performance in that show. Yeah, dude. Between <laughs> I him- am an agent of the FBI. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy when you have Steve Buscemi basically giving the performance of his life and he's overshadowed. By, by a guy him. with a girl's last name. <laughs> yes, exactly. You're just like, man, what a fucking embarrassment of riches that show had for in the acting. It department. really did. It really but, did. Uh, but yeah, so uh, Superman shows up and he's just like, we should talk, and then that's the end. So that is Black Adam clearly setting up uh, a sequel in which Superman is directly involved. Clearly. Uh, but yeah. So what do you, what do you think, uh, predictions for the next Black Adam movie? So you would think it would involve Shazam, but we saw the trailer to Shazam at the theater and it had no Black Adam in it. (laughs) So I'm guessing that Black Adam has nothing to do with that movie. And I'm guessing Shazam will have nothing to do with the next Black Adam movie. I think they, I can't go this long without those two meeting it. It You think so? They literally have the same emblem on their chest. (laughs) It can't be that long in the two. That'd be crazy. Wouldn't it be a hilarious running joke, though, if they just refused to put them together and like they both like there were seven Shazam movies and like eight Black Adam movies. And then like finally in the they finally met each other and they're like, who the fuck are you? (laughs) The fuck, man? (laughs) Who are you? I would just laugh if they had dreams of being each other and they're like, ah, (laughs) yeah. I was big and I was black and I was a lot stronger and I had way better charisma. <laughs> what? I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I had I had extreme mobility in my eyebrow. I don't know how I was doing it. Dwayne the Wog just wakes up. He's like, I was, I was so weak and I, I was and, I, and small. <laughs> I, was, I looked in the mirror and I saw Kirk Cameron. <laughs> 
because <laughs> someone was calling me a map. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh shit! So predictions for the next Black Adam movie. What do you think is going to happen? Is it going to be Black Adam versus Superman? Is it going to be Superman Black Adam team up, or is it going to be none of those? Like, what what do you think is going to happen? Because you know, I think this is going to think- have a sequel. Yeah, I think the next standalone Black Adam is probably going to be a falling out of with Black Adam and the and everybody. I think there's going to be a lot more in between this movie and the next Black Adam that's going to have, you know, not necessarily be a Black Adam movie, but it's probably going to have Black Adam in it, like mm-hmm. a Justice League movie or um like anything cuz I mean they're about to like the way this is going they're going to have to reboot a lot of people's storylines so like the timeline shit's going to have to happen here soon with the flash and flashpoint and uh batman explaining the batmans and all that that has to all come up soon and I have a feeling you know we'll probably get some black adam and all that Isn't especially flashpoint happening in the new flash movie that's coming out in a few months I'm pretty I'm pretty dang sure yeah so that's it seems like that's all on the docket. So you're probably right about that. Yeah. But I think the next time we're getting a standalone black Adam movie, I think that's going to be the beginning of black Adam, probably like having a falling out or like, Mm. you know, something that's not really in on the tea leaves right now. Mm. I wouldn't mind a justice league movie where black Adam was a villain. I'll tell you right now, I would be on board for that. If we still do. I mean, there's all kinds of scenarios. I mean, they still haven't introduced Legion of doom. Yeah. The Legion of Doom could be a thing for Black Adam because I'm pretty sure at some point he does actually join or I think he does or no, he's part of the dark Justice League Dark, I think, which is like a bunch of evil villains in their own Justice League, like Owl Man, mm. <laughs> voiced by James Woods. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's get James Woods up in this bitch, dude. I swear that's the next level fucking move for DCEU, dude. Is DCEU. getting an Owl Man, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Pulse, pulse smoking fashion victims. <laughs> you need James Woods, man. <laughs> Is it James Wood or James Woods? <laughs> uh, it's James Woods. Okay. <laughs> that guy threw a shoe at somebody and got away with it, dude. He looking just <laughs> dude's a gangster. For sure. <laughs> he absolutely. He someone is. insulted him, and the first thought in his head was taking his shoe off and stepping off the stage and beating the shit out of him with it. <laughs> 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 That's my wife. <laughs> uh, well, broadcaster, on that note, uh, here on the Crack Cellar, we have a official patented Ghostbusters rating system in which we rate all of our reviews. And uh, it's no different this week with Black Adam. What do you give Black Adam? Dude, this this is getting a fucking... Trying to conjure up <laughs> proper vocabulary here. It's uh I think it's a blackface boogeyman, dude. Ooh shit. Boogeyman's <laughs> putting blackface. the blackface on. Okay. It's blackface boogeyman, no so, doubt. Yeah. So th- <laughs> this is like a Fidel Castro Jr. special. <laughs> okay. I like it. I like it a lot. I mean this this movie's it's I keep I want I keep trying to stop myself from saying it's the best DCEU movie <laughs> to come out but cuz I feel like I'm throwing the last Batman under the bus by saying that and I'm also throwing uh the Joker under the bus cuz both those movies were really fucking good too mm-hmm. but Black Adam just came out and was just like it was like cuz the Joker and Batman they were clearly not trying to be a Marvel type of superhero movie. No, you not got at all. into it and it was clear cut from the beginning. These are edgier, darker tone movies, right? Yeah. Black Adam was the first time where it seemed like they were taking Marvel's formula and doing it better. Mm-hmm. Like they actually like it. They took Marvel's the equation, you know? old formula, the one that yeah. people liked. They yeah. Took like that. they, yeah. they added to the formula. It could actually, they improved it. And that's what pumps me up about Black Adam is so much is that this is actually a, like a tolerable middle for DC where they actually might start getting some of the the market back from MCU if they keep this type of theme up yeah. this formula yeah yeah it's i mean fuck dude it's been a while since i've 
seen a theater or heard of a theater that was packed on opening day. Like it, it's weird. Like it used to be like a given, but since the COVID bullshit, like their movies have really been hit hard. There was a while where almost everyone thought that the movie industry was going to collapse, like the theater movie industry and that theaters were just going to all go out of business. So yeah. like going to that expensive sure IMAX they would have they, theater, uh, those tickets, funny, funny. <laughs> those tickets were $23 each. Those were not cheap tickets. For like, real? Yeah. This was an expensive $23 IMAX ticket. That theater was packed. Holy and, shit. and at the end, at the end, the, the movie got a standing ovation. Now, granted, it was for Henry Cavill mostly, but still, like, dude, the last time I saw a standing ovation at the theater was d- when I went to the midnight showing of episode one when I was 15. Like, it was crazy to see a bunch of people stand up and start clapping like that. It was, it, it's weird to see that in the theater, and it, it's really good sign for yeah. what you're talking about with like just the future of the that formula of comic book movie and just the future of cinema i think it's a, it's just a good thing yeah and i it also you know to further the point there seems to be definitely like a shift in leadership at, over at Warner Bros because Big they shift. went out of they went out of their way to tell people explicitly that Henry Cavill was not going to be in this movie. Mm-hmm. And that obviously was on purpose now, yep. you know, cause they wanted to build up the surprise and that's so self-aware. Mm-hmm. It, it It's so encouraging to see you're like, you guys get it. <laughs> you are, you're starting to get it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Agreed. And, uh, that is why I, uh, I give this a boogeyman as well. I'm going to give this one a fucking uh, a Donnie Darko boogie nights boogeyman. This guy was dancing in what? front of a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> he saw a bunny rabbit <laughs> with a knife that's dripping blood. And uh, then he went to bed. You're talking dirty dancing, not boogie <laughs> nights. <laughs> he went to bed. Woke boogie up. nights is... His broken arrow, dog. That's not. <laughs> Looked in the mirror, saw Scott Bakula. <laughs> Am I retarded? <laughs> yeah. This I, th- right now, as of ten twenty two twenty twenty two, this is my movie of the year for sure. We'll see what happens. There's a couple movies left. Hellraiser, which I fuck. I I pray that it's good enough to give this a run for that title, but I doubt it. Like most all the Hellraisers since three have kind of been anywhere from mediocre to bad. So I'm not counting on it. There's uh, Wakanda forever is going to suck ass. That trailer fucking looked awful. Uh, Honestly, the only good line in that, that show was when the mom was talking about losing every piece of her family. <laughs> I was like, that seems like a real like. I kind of got emotional at that. I was like, I was like, yeah, that seemed that was some solid line. Well, she's a good actress, right whoever there. that is. I don't know who that is, but she's definitely a good actress. Yeah, it felt uh, real. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I just I don't see anything taking that away from this movie. I have a feeling this will end end up as my movie of the year, but you know, we'll see. Uh, you know, I actually I haven't watched Top Gun Maverick yet. So that is oh, I, probably yeah. the movie. Dude, everyone says could, it's pretty dope. <laughs> yeah, that's probably the movie that could dethrone Black Adam as my movie of the year. So I we'll see. But either way, this is a fucking amazing movie. And I'm just fucking psyched for DC because I grew up loving Marvel comics, but loving DC movies. When I was a little kid, there really were no Marvel movies. We had DC movies. We had yeah. Superman with Reeves and we had Batman with Keaton. And that was yeah. that was it for me. And to see well, DC had, coming back so strong like this, it, it's just it makes me happy. It makes my child, my inner child, happy. Yeah, for sure, it is like true though. Like in my childhood, like MCU only or MCU Marvel, Marvel only had the Spider animated series, Spider Man animated series, and uh, X Men. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. What well, else? Do they have the anything thing. else? Like, 
the original X Men movie came out like in like what? No, I'm talking about the animated series. Oh no, I I know what you're talking about, but I'm yeah. saying like Marvel movies were essentially non-existent until X Men, the first X Men movie, and that came out like what 1998, something yeah. like that. So maybe no, you know what? It might have come out like 2000. It might not even been in the 90s. So like essentially, Marvel was like just non-existent until the turn of the century. It was all DC back then. And uh, it seems like we're going back into that direction now. So yeah, first first superhero anything I ever saw was Batman. Hell Batman yeah. Mask as a Phantasm. I think that was uh, the first animated like thing I ever like owned and like mm-hmm. rewatched. You know, and I was like, yeah, I want to watch that of Batman. Yep, I watched that with you the first time you saw it. <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty that, dude. Still this day still holds up, man. It's a Hell solid yeah. fucking Batman. <laughs> yeah. All right, broadcaster, on that note, let's uh, get the fuck out of here. Weird. Kondok. On dock. <laughs> so it's like a place where people dock? Is that what you're trying to tell me? <laughs> it's kind of like Clan Dactu. <laughs> <laughs> they fired him from a planet called Clan Dactu. <laughs> 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 they bombed his Johnny. <laughs> Goddamn bugs about this. <laughs> 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 <laughs>